Hey everyone, welcome back to our modern WPF application that we've been coding from scratch and we've been using maapps.metro for the styling, which just is a styling library that you can use with WPF, kind of like the bootstrap of CSS is how I like to describe it, or the bootstrap of HTML. It's the styling, it's predefined CSS, but not CSS and WPF. You get it, hopefully. Anyway, today we're going to uh, talk about selecting an item or a budget in our list view. How I want to do that, we're going to look at the selection change event that we can add. And if that sounds good, feel free to go back to the very beginning of this playlist if this is your first one as well. Also, all of the code will be in my GitHub repo down below if you want to go check that out. And if you're following along, you can compare yourself with that and make sure you're on track. And as always, if you enjoy this and appreciate it, feel free to subscribe. That way you can stay uh, in touch and see what all I put out there. Um, and as I learn things, I, I make videos on it. So yeah, stay tuned for that. So let's talk about what I wanna do in this video. I mentioned this in the last video, now that we are bringing in all of our budgets into the list view whenever the app is started from our database. Because remember, now we have three budgets as of right now in our database, of course, we could add more. And when I select one, I not only want to note that it's selected, but something that's bothering me is this remaining monthly budget is not accurate, right? If I select this one, which has, let's make this app a little bigger. If I select this one, which has a budget amount of 400 bucks, you can see it's selected because it has this blue uh, line through it or blue background for the row. It's $1,600 still down here, and that's incorrect. So what I want to do is keep this up to date, how I plan on attacking that, and uh, yeah, let's just hop into it. So the first thing I want to do is add an event to the list view that shows off that data. So if we go to XAML in the main window, and we look at our list view, we can, we can actually add an event called selection changed and I'll give it a new event handler. It'll use the name that we gave it uh, to preface the event handler name and selection change. So now whenever I initially select a row in that list view or I change from one row to the next, it'll run this event handler and let's go ahead and prove that. So I'm gonna save and we'll go to our code behind. Here's our nice method that it created for us. And right off the bat, I wanna say budget uh, selected item is going to be equal to, and then what did I name this list view? Budget list view. So budget list view dot selected item. And it's going to throw a fit. It wants us to cast this uh, because it doesn't automatically know that the items in this budget list view are of type budget. So it wants us to cast it to ensure that it is going to be of type budget. So let's inside of parentheses say budget like this, and that'll cast the selected item to type budget and convert it. So now if I put a breakpoint right here and we start the app and I click on one, I want to hover over this and see, is it the one I selected and how does it look? So let's start the app and make this a little bigger again. Maybe uh, I can make the app a little larger entirely. Right off the cuff, I think it's a little small, but let's click on a budget. So this one for 400 and I hover over the selected item and we look at the data and here it is, all the data of that row and the list view item that we selected, which is sweet. That's exactly what we wanted. And if I hit continue and I select a different one now, we can see its data is also here since we changed the selection. So perfect. And in fact, why don't I stop the app and put this selected item as a member of this class? And I'm gonna make it a private member because we don't need to know about it outside of this um, C sharp. So private budget selected item. And then down here we can say selected item is equal to this. And the reason I'm putting it up here is because we might have other methods in the future that to want to look at the selected item and that way uh, it can be used by different methods in this class. Perfect, so that's one thing that we needed to do. The next is how do we get the message at the bottom, the remaining monthly budget message to have the correct dollar amount that 
is corresponding to the one that we clicked on. So let's go back to the CS here and the code behind. And this is how we initially set it up. I just made a double called balance and made a 1600 and then created a string from that amount. I'm going to take remaining balance. Well, actually, I'm just going to take this whole thing and I'm going to cut it. And then down in our event handler right here, we no longer need this double balance. So I'm going to remove that. But instead of balance being uh, part of this string, let's do selected item dot budget amount instead. So it's going to grab the budget amount from the selected budget and turn that into a string. And then at some point, I want to make a video specifically on this, the I notify property change and how you can use this to basically notify the XAML that a property has been changed and updated. And that way, if it's bound to a property and the code behind, it will automatically update. But in this case, I don't think this is really necessary to go all out and do something like this, especially this is more for something if you have uh, a property or you have something in the XAML bound to a class, an object of a class. When it's just a single string like this and the code behind that it's bound to, um, to me, it doesn't really make much sense. So I'm going to rather go down to where we have that message in the footer. I want to give this text block a name. So x colon name and let's name this um, remaining. Oh, remaining budget amount or remaining budget text block. That makes more sense. And then back in our code behind, we can say remaining budget text blocks block dot text is going to be equal to remaining balance. And that's basically our way of notifying the text block that the property changed. Even though there's binding here, it's not going to know uh, when one is selected. It doesn't know that it's updated. So let's save that and let's start this app. And now at the bottom in the footer, we should see the correct. Actually, before we start that, let me make this app bigger on startup now that it's in my mind. So at the top here in the Metro window, let's give this guy a width of like, I don't know, 1100 and a height of 650. Is that enough? Maybe that's too much. How about 575? Let's see what that looks like. I guess I could have done that without closing the app. Um, but yeah, that looks better now. So let's click on a budget and we'll get rid of this breakpoint. I forgot that was there. At the bottom now, we have the right budget amount. And watch as I switch budgets, how it changes as well, which is kind of nice. So in the future, this is gonna be a little trickier because when we add budget details like expenses and the total budget amount goes down, this will also have to be updated to reflect that. So let's say I add a cost or an expense of 50 bucks I bought dinner or something like that. And my remaining budget is 750. We don't want to forget to turn this to 750 instead of 800. So something to keep in mind. Um, but now we have a budget selected that the whole class and the code behind can see and use. And when we add expenses, um, I'm sure that will be very useful. So even though this might seem a little bit uh, not so important. It's actually going to be really, really important in the future. I have a good feeling. So thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Um, I also mentioned something I want to do is make this a little more dynamic. So if I hit plus by accident and I want this to disappear, I don't want to see this. I can, uh, after this is a hit, it turns into a minus and then we hit the minus and it disappears again and goes back to a plus, if that makes sense. I think that'll be the next video. And then after that, I plan on what if we want to edit the budget? So what if, I don't know, for some reason, um, we put in the wrong budget amount or whatever, and it should be 1300, not 1200, or maybe 1100. How do we do that? Uh, that'll be in an upcoming video too. 
And then finally, uh, plan on adding expenses to our budget so we can actually use this and keep track of how much we spend as this app should do. So hopefully you're really enjoying this. I'm enjoying making it and kind of learning WPF again because it's just been so long since I've used it in the real world. And uh, yeah, hope to see you in the next video. Take care.